Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to another Help for the World Medicine Grand Rounds. Today we have Dr. Saleh, who is Assistant Professor of Clinical Medicine at SIU School of Medicine. He specializes in pediatric infectious disease. So today we'll be talking about congenital syphilis. So Dr. Saleh completed a fellowship in pediatric infectious disease at Duke University Medical Center and a pediatric residency at Penn State Hershey Medical Center before joining SIU. He also practiced at Mayo Clinic uh, Health Systems. Dr. Saleh's research activities include a collaborative research projects in Sudan focused on eliminating measles and evaluating vaccine safety and immunogenicity. He's board certified in pediatrics and pediatric infectious disease, and he's also a member of the American Academy of Pediatricians and Pediatric Infectious Disease Society. So we're very, very lucky to have you here today, and we're so excited for your presentation. So thank you for everything that you do today and every day. All yours. Thank you for the introduction. I'm very happy and pleased to be here today. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, Let me know if you're unable to, but it says that you should be able to. All right, can you see the title? Um, no, not yet. Let me move to the other screen then. There we go, yes, we can see it now. All right, do you see one slide? Yes, it's perfect. Oh, okay. All right, so congenital syphilis um, has been a, um, a huge um, problem now and uh, re-emerging in the US and all uh, over the world. My talk, I will... Um, um, be talking about uh, syphilis, uh, this outline and epidemiology um, presentation, uh, how to diagnose and how to evaluate neonates with congenital syphilis and opportunities to improve um, uh, prevention. So we'll start with a case. This is very typical and um, usually congenital syphilis cases are most of the time, every case is unique and um, you have to go through uh, evaluation and uh, every again every case is very unique but this is a, a 39 week um, female infant born to 23 year old mother um, had very late perinatal care um, first RPR was around two weeks of gestation was non-reactive but again repeat testing two months before delivery showed uh, RPR uh, syphilis testing of one to eight but a mother had um, penicillin allergy, so she was hospitalized three weeks before delivery for desensitization and received um, penicillin. And uh, of note, her RPR at that time was 1 to 28, 128. Um, and then the three days before delivery, repeat testing showed uh, RPR decreasing to 1 to 16, and the baby was born. Um, without any symptoms and normal exam and had an um, RPR of one to four. So we'll talk later about this baby and how to manage um, congenital syphilis. So the etiology, uh, the pathogen causing um, syphilis is uh, trypanem uh, pallidum. It's a um, um, thin motile spirochete. Um, gram negative and usually it's uh, very fragile and does not survive long after um, outside the host and humans are the sole natural host so that's why elimination is possible if we if we have um, low yield and, and resources and um, it cannot be cultured in vitro that's what one of the difficulties in diagnosis and can be seen uh, only in dark um, microscopy and there is uh, always remember there is other related 
um, trypanemis, and also there is at least six non-pathogenic trypanemis in the oral cavity and GI, which can give you cross reaction positive testing. Moving to the clinical course of uh, untreated syphilis, usually um, syphilis incubation period is about 10 days to uh, up to 90 days. And um, it starts with um, uh, primary uh, chancre infection. And it's usually, again, sorry, divided to, into three stages, primary, secondary, and tertiary, as you can see here in the, uh, in the slide. Um, and beside the primary, secondary, and tertiary, there is a, a latent period um, of infection after the initial infection where patients will remain asymptomatic and seropositive. And the latent period defined by early if it is um, if you have the infection in the preceding year and late latent if the infection is uh, more than a year. In adults and older children, again, the, the stage is um, um, divided into three primary, usually start with a painless indurated um, uh, ulcers or chancres in the skin or mucous membranes usually occurs at the site of inoculation and mostly in the genitalia uh, or depending on the type of sexual contact could be in the oral area or uh, anal area. These lesions appear on average um, um, three weeks after exposure, but again can be up to 90 days later and it heals uh, spontaneously. Uh, then, um, Clinical uh, progress uh, goes to the secondary stage, which uh, usually happen one to two months later and characterized by rash and generalized symptoms. You can have lymphadenopathy, fever, splenomegaly, and uh, arthralgia. Uh, this stage usually resolves spontaneously also if not treated um, within um, three to 12 weeks. And then um, after the secondary stage, your patient goes to a latent period where again, they will be seropositive. Um, testing is positive, but there is no symptoms. And again, divided into either early acquired in the, within a year or uh, late uh, latent. And if um, uh, there is a patient with unknown duration of syphilis, you will uh, usually consider that as um, uh, late latent syphilis and manage him as, as such. Uh, tertiary syphilis occurs 15, 15 to 30 years later, and usually they have uh, gamma formation or uh, cardiovascular involvement, mainly over titis. Um, Neuro syphilis can occur in any stage um, um, in acquired syphilis or in congenital syphilis, and usually you have meningitis, uveitis, and um, later on uh, dementia and um, uh, tapis dorsalis in adults. If you talk about congenital syphilis, uh, usually it's a transplacental transmission um, from the spirochetemia in the mother uh, and usually can happen anytime uh, during pregnancy, but uh, increased transmission with advanced uh, gestation. Um, intrapartum infection can occur but um, much less frequently, and usually from contact with um, uh, maternal uh, lesions uh, during birth. Postnatal uh, infection is exceedingly rare. And um, transmission again occur at any stage of maternal disease. So if the mother has primary latent um, or latent, secondary or latent infection, can occur. But with primary and secondary, the transmission risk is very high, 60 to 100% of the time and latent is less uh, 40% and late latent uh, is less transmission. And syphilis has significant um, uh, clinical outcome in, in babies and in general, and if untreated during pregnancy it can result in a spontaneous abortion, stillbirth uh, or perinatal death. Uh, now moving to the epidemiology of congenital syphilis, uh, we'll talk about um, global picture and then uh, more details in the US. Um, this estimates from 2016, WHO 
uh, estimates about 1 million pregnant women were infected uh, with syphilis and highest burden in sub-Saharan Africa. And of those about um, um, congenital syphilis cases usually mirrors the infection in mothers and about 600,000 cases uh, estimated worldwide in 2016. And of those, um, there are three, um, uh, more than 300 cases uh, of adverse birth outcomes and 200,000 uh, uh, stillbirth and neonatal deaths. And um, syphilis caused the um, stillbirth uh, second uh, to malaria only. So it's a very significant cause of um, mortality uh, and morbidity. And if you look at this map, it just show you um, data from 2008 to 2009. Uh, these um, rates of um, positive testing in antenatal care uh, clinics uh, around the world. And if you can see Sub-Saharan Africa um, uh, uh, shared the burden of the disease. More data, recent data in 2019 from WHO shows that about um, less than 50% of testing has been done in, in about 20 uh, countries um, of the 78 countries reporting uh, regularly to the WHO. So there's a lot uh, need to be done. And the rate overall uh, of testing in the 78 countries was about 3% um, of pregnant women tested positive during pregnancy. And only about 35 countries of the, 60, of the 67 countries reporting to the, U, the, to the WHO showed more than 95% um, of women uh, uh, who are diagnosed received treatment. And this is a definition of um, um, uh, that if the country is free from syphilis, you have to have at least um, um, treating more than 95% of women during pregnancy. Now moving to the US. Um, so in the US, the syphilis reporting started back in 1941 and became a, a nationally notifiable disease in 1944. Um, and if you can see the there is marked decline in cases um, after you know introduction of penicillin treatment and with good public health services. So um, this continued to decline until um, you, if you can see there's a bump in 1980s and 90s, um, uh, we will talk about this in a minute. But since 2001, um, this was the lowest point for, uh, for the US was about 2.1 cases per 100,000 population. But since 2001, um, syphilis has been increasing in the US uh, every year. If you look at congenital syphilis, again, it mirrors um, total cases of syphilis. And same thing you can see from 1941, dec declined um, uh, mar uh, remarkably. And then in, 19, uh, in the 1990s, there is a bump or increase in the rate. And this is mainly due to the change of the CDC surveillance uh, definition. Because previously, we used to diagnose uh, congenital syphilis but by clin with clinical uh, features only. But because of the, rec the recognition that a lot of babies are born and exposed and get infected, they're asymptomatic. Uh, we added um, criteria to account for mother's history um, of diagnosis and treatment. And based on that, uh, there was increased um, reporting of um, cases of congenital syphilis. Um, so there is increase because of the criteria changed, but there was also increase in true clinical uh, cases. If you look at um, uh, uh, the different um, rates of uh, uh, syphilis in um, women and men, um, the most common uh, age groups in women 20 to 24 years uh, of age, and in men uh, 25 to 29 years of age. So it generally affects a uh, young uh, population and women of um, um, childbearing age. And this just similarly 
showing you know, women and men uh, percentages and uh, with most recent data in the US from 2011 to 2021. And as you can see in women, more than 36% uh, increase um, in uh, just difference between 2021 and 2020. So this one shows you um, syphilis um, uh, cases reported in the US between 2011 to 2020. Uh, so almost all uh, areas in the US, except for um, uh, I think like only six areas, uh, they have no cases, but almost all the states reported cases. And if you look at the rate of syphilis between 2011 to 2020, again, also you can see how the map changed from yellow to green to all um, uh, blue. So the rates increasing um, uh, dramatically. And this is just the same slide show you uh, the differences between 2011 and 2020. Um, just re-emphasizing congenital syphilis again follows uh, primary and secondary syphilis in um, uh, women. So the rate um, um, of uh, congenital syphilis is strikingly parallel to the rate of uh, syphilis among women. And this is important just to understand the epidemiology and to focus on uh, prevention efforts. Um, this is also again uh, congenital syphilis um, in 2021, the most recent data showing about more than 2,000 uh, inf uh, infants born in 2021. And um, of those um, 2,200 infants, about 7% will uh, still birth or infant death. So very significant um, um, mortality. And um, if you look at um, the changes in um, uh, death and stillbirths, again, between 2019 uh, to 2011, um, there is a significant increase, more than 500% increase in 2000, um, since 2011. Um, and again, in stillbirth, more than 800% uh, percentage increase. If you look at the whole picture, this is uh, just showing congenital syphilis, um, infants uh, who are alive with signs and symptoms, and um, the green, dark green is significant uh, for um, congenital, congenital syphilis babies with, um, with no signs or symptoms um, documented. Now, the next section will uh, talk about uh, clinical uh, features of congenital syphilis and um, what you look for. Uh, can, in uh, um, congenital syphilis, usually uh, divided into two stages early congenital syphilis and late, and this depends on um, when symptoms appear. So, in uh, late congenital syphilis, symptoms usually start after the first two years of life, and early congenital syphilis within the first two years of life. And our goal is usually to try to treat babies so that to prevent complications leading to um, um, all these symptoms. Um, again, infection occurs hematogenously from the mother and disseminate to involve almost all organs in the body. Um, before um, delivery, uh, babies can have um, still, um, can. Uh, you can have a stillbirth or IUGR, uh, intratriangular uh, restriction. Babies can be small for gestational age or develop non-immune high drops. And um, also can syphilis can lead to preterm um, and delivery. And um, most of the infants are asymptomatic. So about two thirds or more uh, usually don't have any symptoms. Um, one thing you usually be able to forget is to examine the placenta and the umbilical cord at birth because uh, uh, there is diff definite pathologic uh, features you can see. Uh, placenta usually is very large and thick and pale um, in cases of congenital syphilis. And then the umbilical cord, there is uh, a sign called barber 
ball umbilical cord. You can see a dimerous portion with the spiral stripes of red and, and uh, blue decolorization. And this is just um, from um, the ne um, uh, necrotic changes that uh, have been and um, inflammation. For uh, early syphilis, uh, it affects, again, any part of the body. Uh, when we go by systems, if you look at the hematological and reticulin endothelial system, uh, hematomegaly occurs in half of the uh, children and spolinomegaly, um, then followed by lymphadenopathy. You can have thrombocytopenia. Hemolytic anemia can occur at birth or in the first um, few weeks or month of life. And uh, also jaundice and um, uh, uh, leukopenia or leukocytosis. Mucocutaneous uh, changes. Um, yeah, babies can have rhinitis, um, mucus patches in the mouth and um, or genital area and condyloma um, lata. Uh, the rash in congenital syphilis mainly uh, papulovascular, uh, vesicular rash and prominent in palms and soles. Uh, but you can have also been figures uh, syphiliticus, which we'll describe in a minute. Um, so the lesions, again, can be um, uh, very um, variable in uh, shapes and uh, color. Um, uh, but again, most of the time, populus squamous uh, lesions and mainly uh, palms and soles. And um, vesicular uh, polus lesions are uncommon, but if they, if you see, it is very highly uh, pathognomonic and diagnostic for uh, syphilis, especially when it when when uh, it's uh, uh, involving the hands and soles. And as you can see, these cases of uh, bimphigus uh, syphiliticus. And these lesions are uh, very, um, have high um, uh, uh, load of um, organisms who are very infectious. Again, the mucocutaneous manifestation, the snuffles usually commonly uh, appear in the first uh, weeks of life and um, they can cause ulceration of the nasal mucosa and cartilage uh, destruction. And you can have also kind of condylomata lata, uh, which uh, you can see it in the yeah, anal area or around nares and around the mouth. And also these lesions are very uh, uh, extremely infectious. For, uh, er again, early congenital syphilis, you can have pneumonia, which is now rare to see, but um, uh, characteristically, um, you can have um, the lungs will become uh, very heavy, um, edematous and firm uh, with white uh, yellow uh, discoloration. That's why the name uh, pneumonia alba uh, or uh, lurid pneumonia. Uh, the eye also can be affected and usually can have cataracts, keratitis or uh, retinitis. And then the CNS um, in congenital syphilis can, can uh, present as uh, aseptic meningitis in 25% uh, seizures or cranial uh, pulses, or uh, the baby can be very irritable. Moving to the bones, uh, about 33% to 95% of infants um, uh, have uh, bony lesions, mainly um, osteochondritis, um, which can present at birth in 15% of cases. And you can have uh, periostitis, and pseudoparalysis from uh, sub EBCL uh, fractures, and also you can have dactylitis in the hands and feet. Uh, laboratory findings in um, early um, congenital syphilis you can have, again, uh, as we said, anemia, thrombocytopenia, uh, low glucose, and elevated liver enzymes, and also you can have. Um, Um In the CSF, um, you'll, you can have pleocytosis, increased white cells, and um, elevated protein. And VDRL also can be reactive. And um, you can have proteinuria, which is um, caused by nephrotic syndrome. 
Um, you can have hypopituitarism and um, x-rays also um, findings with um, extremities and uh, for pneumonia. Moving to late, uh, congenital syphilis, which again, um, symptoms by definition occurs uh, after uh, the second um, year of life. And in the eye, you can have interstitial keratitis, you can have uh, also optic nerve atrophy, and you can see sign of um, uh, retinitis um, from um, early infection. In the ears, um, you can have uh, eighth, eighth uh, nerve deafness and um, the nose and face, you can have subtle nose and uh, impaired uh, maxillary uh, growth. And you can also have um, large mandible. A dentition, you'll, you can have Hutchinson teeth, uh, which are um, egg shaped and notched teeth. And also you can have uh, mulberry molars. Uh, skeletal uh, involvement in late congenital syphilis. You can see a uh, frontal bossing, um, just as large um, um, uh, skull of a frontal bone, and you can have um, also saber shins, uh, as you can see in the picture. Uh, Clodin joints in the knees, um, the clavicle, um, hypertrophy in the sternal end, and also you can have high um, palatal arch and um, perforated hard bullet. In, in late congenital syphilis, CNS uh, involvement, again, you can have aseptic meningitis and um, you can have symptomatic neurosyphilis, hydrocephalus, seizures, and cranial nerve palsies. Moving on to um, diagnostic test. Uh, usually, a diagnosis of syphilis relies on clinical evaluation of the patient um, and um, history, as well as uh, laboratory testing. Uh, we usually do a dark, if you uh, find the organism in, uh, in dark field microscopic examination, that's very uh, confirmative. And you can uh, do it from placenta, umbilical cord, um, autopsy uh, slides, and also um, of the specimen and you can have lesions from nose and uh, tissue. Uh, PCR testing is a promising tool. It's not cleared yet by FDA, um, um, but it's something uh, you can use and we'll talk about it also later. And also uh, the mainstay of diagnosis also now is serology. You can do um, non-tribunal test, uh, which is RBR or VDRL and tribunal test. The non-tribunal test, RPR and VDRL, usually target cardiolipin antibodies, and it's a flocculation test, agglutination test, and can give you quantitative, uh, quantitative tighter uh, results with serial two-fold uh, dilutions. So you start with um, the patient serum one-to-one, -one, and then you uh, keep diluting um, um, the serum and um, adding 0.5 ml uh, saline to each tube. And that's how we come up with uh, different dilutions. It's a fairly inexpensive and uh, rapid test. You can do it uh, uh, quickly. Um, and it's uh, very useful to assess um, response to treatment and also uh, to detect uh, if uh, reinfection happens. And diagnosis of congenital syphilis is usually supported by the infant's uh, RPR or VDRL uh, of uh, more than times um, the mother. So that's why usually you have to do the same uh, test uh, that was done in the mother. If it's RPR, you do it, uh, do RPR. If the mother had VDRL, you do VDRL, and then you compare the two tests. Uh, this is how the test looks. Um, the car, uh, they use card and then you put your solutions and the serum. Uh, it's important to know that RPR and VDRL, the, they are not the same. Um, RPR is more sensitive than VDRL. Um, and RPR is the preferred screen for pregnant women. Um, usually again, do the same test on infant and mother and um, um, preferably in the same lab uh, if you can. 
And also the CSF, uh, we usually do only uh, VDRL. The um, uh, non-trib enamel test, um, again, there is fourfold reduction in terror within six to 12 months after treatment for primary or secondary syphilis. So that's why they're, they're very useful for um, following um, response to treatment. And they become non-reactive within one year after treatment. And um, um, they um, and um, seronegative within two years, even if the initial titer was high. So by two years, usually they become um, uh, negative. There is um, some cases they can have um, low stable titers. Example, if the VDRL is one to two or RPR um, one to four or less, um, that's gonna happen despite uh, effective therapy. Uh, but this is more common in latent and tertiary uh, syphilis. And this guy again considered zero fast. Uh, it's important to know that you can have also false negative uh, RPR uh, or VDRL. And it is um, more um, frequent in early primary, late, uh, late latent, and late congenital syphilis. Uh, that's why repeat testing is important if you still uh, suspect um, a diagnosis. And uh, also, um, there is uh, something called Brezon phenomenon or Brezon reaction. You can have false negative because of high concentration of antibody interfering with your uh, testing with the flocculation or agglutination. Uh, it's, it's rare, but it can happen it, at any stage and more common in primary, uh, secondary, and in, also during pregnancy and also with uh, HIV um, uh, infection. And on the other hand, you can have false positive RPR or uh, VDRL, um, mainly other infections, um, uh, viruses, TB, leprosy, this all can give you, and malaria can give you false positive and um, connective tissue disease, um, pregnancy, or sometimes uh, uh, drug use or contamination with uh, warts and jelly from umbilical cord specimens. Now moving to the trypanemal test. Uh, they target trypanemal validin, uh, validin antibodies, and there is different um, testing. Um, there is FTA um, antibody absorption test, uh, the TPPA, and um, enzyme immune assays are now becoming more um, uh, more popular, and also the uh, CIA's uh, chemolysis uh, immune assays. Um, The uh, trypanemal test, uh, they uh, most uh, remain act reactive for life uh, after uh, infection, even after um, successful therapy. So they are not very useful to follow a response to treatment. And um, that's why we don't usually uh, use them for diagnosis of, of congenital syphilis. And again, you have to remember about 15 to 25% of patients treated in primary stage, um, they, be, uh, they can also become non-reactive after two to three years. So some patients, um, they become negative, but most of people, they stay reactive for life. And also there is false positive with trypanemal tests, just like with the RPR and mainly with the spirochetal uh, diseases and uh, Lyme disease. Um, in early syphilis, RBR and VDRL may become uh, positive before the trypanemal test. Um, that's why if you're suspecting, again, the disease, you can repeat the trypanemal test again in two weeks or four weeks and um, um, almost every month in high-risk groups, uh, definitely in, in pregnant women. Um, Nucleic acid uh, amplification test, PCRs are now um, um, uh, common in, uh, still in uh, research settings, um, not commercially available yet, uh, but the specificity is um, uh, very excellent. Um, in um, in um, pediatrics, actually, 
a, a specimen for amniotic fluid, uh, neonatal CSF and neonatal blood have very high uh, sensitivity compared to um, uh, adults. So this is very promising um, to use in uh, diagnosis of congenital syphilis. Um, nowadays, because of um, uh, just um, ease of um, mass testing, we will now do using also something uh, called reverse syphilitic testing, syphilis testing. You start with a trebinimal test, and and then um, if it is positive, you do the RPR, and uh, if it's positive, then that means uh, you have syphilis, either new or past infection. Uh, if this is negative, then you, you do a second trebinimal test, uh, and if this is positive, you have a past or potential early syphilis, and if it's negative, um, it's inconclusive, either could be early infection or false positive. Uh, this is in comparison to the traditional uh, syph uh, syphilis testing when you start with RBR and if it's negative, um, then you don't have syphilis. If it's positive, you do confirmatory test um, before you can say, yeah, it's, uh, it's syphilis. Um, the reverse algorithm is um, um, uh, uh, be able to using it because it's, um, um, uh, you can use high um, uh, quantity at the same time and to uh, try to decrease the cost uh, of um, uh, by using high volume. And also it's um, detect IgG and IgM. So potentially can, you can have um, more positive tests early on. And in the US now about 20% to 30% of labs, um, you start with the reverse testing. Uh, screening of pregnant women uh, during pregnancy. Um, the CDC had uh, updated guidelines in 2015 uh, with re recommending a screening uh, early in pregnancy in the first prenatal visit. And then again, um, later um, the third trimester uh, um, for areas of high prevalence and also in women for high risk. So usually here we do it at, again at first trimester and, and third trimester. And if there is any earlier diagnosis of syphilis during the second um, half of pregnancy, you have to do also sonography to look for any changes in the in the fetus. And a lot of time you can find uh, in about 30% of cases, you can find hematomegaly or anemia or um, placenta, um, um, uh, large and um, changes in the placenta if, um, if the mother had inf infection early on. Um, again, if there is any stillborn um, uh, after 20 weeks of age, you have to test the mother for syphilis also. And usually you do not uh, discharge mothers or neonate before knowing the ser serology status of both um, uh, and um, uh, treat accordingly. For the mothers, um, treatment for primary, secondary, and early uh, latent, you give uh, benzacine penicillin uh, one dose, and for late latent or if unknown uh, duration, you give uh, penicillin um, uh, three times uh, a week, uh, every week for uh, three doses. And uh, during pregnancy, uh, you have to treat pregnant women with penicillin um, to ensure um, uh, adequate therapy to prevent congenital syphilis. And if the mother has uh, allergies, you have to um, attempt desensitization and use um, penicillin. And adequate therapy during pregnancy def defined is as if you give the mother penicillin and um, at least um, 30 days before delivery. And if you're using the three um, uh, dosing, um, um, you have to finish everything before 30 days of delivery. Otherwise, um, uh, the baby has a risk of infection. Now moving to evaluation of new needs for congenital syphilis, how to diagnose kids with congenital syphilis. Um, in the, again, in the first um, 
um, less than 30 days, the new nets, um, when they're born, don't discharge the um, infants until, you know, the mother's um, uh, syphilis status and um, uh, uh, evaluate the baby if the mother is positive. Obtain usually, again, same test as the mother uh, to compare the tires. If the mother has VDRL, you obtain VDRL on the baby or RPR uh, if uh, she has RPR done. And a negative uh, RPR in the mother at delivery does not rule out congenital syphilis because um, the mother ha can have infection is incubating. So if there is risk factors, always test and keep following uh, testing. And uh, infants born to mothers with syphilis and HIV confession, usually you treat and evaluate um, uh, same. There is no, no specific um, uh, variation for babies exposed to HIV or have HIV. Um, CDC has um, uh, this table for um, uh, uh, delineating the um, um, how, how to diagnose uh, congenital syphilis. So you you start with uh, if you start with the baby exam and syphilis labs. Um, if the baby has any abnormal physical examination or the RPR uh, or VDRL titers are uh, more than four times the maternal titer or, the, or you have um, positive um, uh, tests from the lesion or PCR, uh, then you have a, um, a proven or highly uh, probable uh, diagnosis. And in that case, the maternal history doesn't matter. So if the baby has abnormal physical exam or testing, uh, then uh, this is a highly or probable or proven uh, diagnosis. And then you do your evaluation and you treat uh, with uh, penicillin uh, for 10 days. And usually our um, choice of treatment is um, uh, penicillin GIV for 10 days. And remember to change the dosing after seven days uh, of life uh, to Q8 instead of Q12, Q12 because of the um, maturity in um, uh, uh, renal function. If um, the baby has a normal exam and VDRL titers uh, or RPR titers are less than uh, four times uh, the mother, then you look at the, the mother uh, history uh, of syphilis, the stage and the treatment. Uh, if the mother was not treated adequately, or uh, no documentation of uh, treatment, or she was given uh, an ampenicillin uh, treatment, or the treatment has been less than uh, 30 days uh, before delivery, um, then um, diagnosis of uh, corneal syphilis is possible in this baby, and you do your evaluation and treat uh, with 10 days, similar to Brovan uh, or highly probable case. If the mother are treated during pregnancy adequately, and um, more than four weeks, and also no evidence of reinfection or relapse, um, the tires are not going, um, rising up, uh, then uh, diagnosis is less likely. And um, in this case, you don't do evaluation, uh, but you treat um, with uh, one dose of penicillin uh, intramuscularly. Uh, this is what we prefer. Um, because follow-up is uh, very difficult and uh, sometimes um, the risk um, uh, of um, uh, missing the, the baby is high. So usually we give um, the penicillin uh, IM in this case. Similarly, if uh, the mother has the um, syphilis even before pregnancy and treated and um, responded well without uh, um, um, in re evidence of re reinfection or relapse, um, then there is unlikely congenital syphilis. And again, you don't do evaluation and you can um, do, um, you can treat with one dose again also of uh, IM penicillin, or if you um, ensure follow up, you can continue follow up the baby. Because in, there is still risk of um, uh, syphilis in the baby, and you can have incubating um, syphilis up to three months of age. Um, in most of the time, we just 
to be safe, we give the IM penicillin. Again, because we risk um, uh, losing follow-up. Um, if you look at the red book, our reference for pediatric infectious disease uh, from the American Academy of Pediatrics, they have um, uh, a very uh, complex chart um, how to evaluate and diagnose um, babies uh, exposed to uh, syphilis. Um, this is my um, modification of the, just try to make it more simple and colorful. So if you see the blue um, part of the algorithm, this is the mother side. You start with the mother. If uh, the mother has reactive testing, traditional or reverse, and um, then you look at um, the treatment history of the mother. If, if, if uh, the mother was not treated adequately uh, or there is no documentation or she, um, she received non-penicillin um, antibiotic or less than four weeks, uh, or there is reinfection, relapse, um, or the partner has recent syphilis, then you have to evaluate the baby and do the uh, full wor uh, workup. Um, and then um, if the baby has abnormal exam or testing um, or RPR more than four times the mother, uh, the mother um, or the, the evaluation was incomplete or um, then this is a proven or highly probable case, and then you treat with penicillin again for 10 days. If um, um, the, the infant exam is normal and the titers um, are less than uh, four times the mother's um, and evaluation is normal, then uh, this is a possible, uh, and still you give 10 days also uh, of penicillin. Um, if the mother treated during pregnancy, adequately more than four weeks without evidence of reinfection or relapse, then you um, look at the baby. If the baby uh, normal uh, with um, less than four um, uh, fault maternal tires or um, above, uh, then you uh, classify the baby accordingly. If the baby RBR is more than four times the mother and uh, or there is abnormal exam, then this is proven or highly probable again, and you treat again with 10 days. If the mother, sorry, if the infant exam is uh, normal and um, tires are less than four uh, fourfold of the mothers, then there is a less likely uh, congenital syphilis and you, you give only one dose of uh, benzene penicillin. On the other hand, if the mother um, is um, positive and was treated uh, before pregnancy and um, RBR remained uh, zero fast or negative um, during pregnancy um, and the baby is uh, had normal exam, that is unlikely um, uh, to have congenital syphilis. And uh, you can, again, either give one dose of penicillin or follow up uh, closely. Um, If um, the baby's exam, again, abnormal at any time uh, or um, fourfold uh, more than the mother, again, this is uh, proven or highly uh, probable. Follow up um, of infants born uh, to mothers with syphilis. Um, usually you do your well child evaluations um, at, at, at any time you see the baby, you, you look for any um, um, uh, syphilis complications or stigmata. And for testing wise, you uh, obtain RPR or VDRL every two to three months until they are non-reactive, which usually become um, non-reactive um, by six to 12 months and decrease by three months of age. Uh, if at any time uh, the titers are increasing or um, remained um, resistantly stable after um, six or 12 months of treatment, um, or um, the tires are reactive after 12 months, then you reevaluate again, uh, and in including doing a lumbar puncture. And uh, new nets with non reactive tire again at birth, with mothers uh, seropositive positive at delivery, you have to retest at, at least at three months to rule out uh, incubating congenital syphilis. For um, Terebinimal test, 
usually again um, maternal antibodies persist in the um, um, uh, children until they're 15 months of age. So any testing before that reflects the mother's uh, um, uh, reaction, not uh, the baby. Uh, but if um, you obtain testing after 18 months of age uh, and uh, TB, uh, TBB, uh, for example, is positive, then that's diagnostic of congenital syphilis if um, RPR is still positive. And then you do your full evaluation and treat. Uh, abnormal CSF exam uh, diagnosis, usually you repeat uh, CSF again at six months um, or after uh, therapy. And uh, if abnormal, without explanation, you treat again. Um, moving to the next um, uh, session, I'll talk about uh, missed opportunities for prevention and uh, just give example. Uh, this um, a case report in New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, there is um, a mother had uh, RPR uh, in early pregnancy and uh, never tested again um, in the third trimester. And um, her child now is six months old and the parents diagnosed with syphilis uh, 10 days um, before presentation. So automatically uh, this triggered uh, testing the baby also. And they found the baby RBR was one to 512 and uh, with positive um, a trebinimal test. Uh, the baby also on further looking um, and the baby had frontal passing and, and also pre-rectal mass, which actually usually actually was seen initially at uh, two weeks of age. And at that time they thought uh, this is, could be hemangioma, but um, immune staining of this lesion showed uh, spirochete as you, as you can see in the picture and X-ray of the lower extremity showed um, uh, severe periostitis. This baby was treated um, with 10 days of penicillin and you can see the lesion um, resolved by then. Um, looking at the uh, um, US um, report, uh, United States report from 2019, this showed that most um, uh, commonly missed uh, prevention opportunity is lack of adequate maternal treatments. If you can see 31% uh, of women diagnosed, but were not adequately treated um, for syphilis. And about 28% of women, so there is no um, uh, uh, timely prenatal care. So there is late prenatal care or there is no testing. And 11% um, um, acquire syphilis later in pregnancy uh, after an, an, uh, an initial negative testing. So that's a very, um, um, should just show you uh, importance of um, meticulous screening during pregnancy. And uh, this shows um, uh, again also um, most recent data from 2016 to 2020, about 2000 um, uh, cases um, of congenital syphilis, there was no timely prenatal care or no timely uh, syphilis testing uh, done. Um, this only in 2020. And also in um, about 38%, uh, um, there was no adequate uh, maternal treatment, um, even with um, uh, diagnosing uh, syphilis uh, appropriately during uh, pregnancy. So there is still more uh, we need to do. Um, this is another um, uh, case. Um, uh, I mean, another uh, study reviewing um, 30, uh, more than 30, almost 4,000 cases of communal syphilis between 2014 and 2018. And um, of those cases, about 67 cases were uh, diagnosed uh, after neonatal period. And most of these kids uh, were uh, diagnosed at the age of um, um, a two months uh, or more. And 67% uh, had abnormal exam um, uh, findings and uh, almost 70% have also X-ray findings. And um, more, more than one third, um, they have um, evidence of um, 
uh, CNS or neurosyphilis um, uh, by um, uh, testing the, the CSF. Um, so congenital syphilis can be prevented with a simple and inexpensive uh, rabbit test. And uh, if you follow also with treatment with uh, same penicillin, however, still rates of syphilis testing in pregnant women is suboptimal um, worldwide and also in the US. And uh, there is um, a lot of steps we can do to ensure uh, proper identification and uh, treatment, um, you know, starting from um, um, as a, a population health and um, improving our public health um, services and perinatal screening uh, throughout pregnancy, and then also uh, evaluating um, newborns uh, properly and um, treating adequately. However, this is um, easier said than um, implemented, you know, um, especially in limited resource countries. Uh, and even here in the US, it's um, following the guidelines. And um, uh, this, uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, can be difficult. And in countries with highest burden of infection, there is again, limited resources and uh, even sometimes shortage of uh, benzos and penicillin. Um, going back to the case uh, we discussed initially, uh, the 39-weeker um, mother had uh, RPR um, during uh, pregnancy and then treated uh, within um, three weeks uh, before delivery. Uh, so the risk is uh, significant. And um, baby had um, normal exam and uh, asymptomatic with RPR 1 to 4 compared to 116 in the mother. So it's not more than fourfold. If you follow the algorithm, this baby, because the mother was not treated um, uh, before uh, four weeks uh, of delivery. Um, so this baby underwent evaluation and um, 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 then um, received treatment for possible syphilis for 10 days. And on follow-up, um, uh, two and four months later, um, was uh, his RPR became non-reactive. Uh, this is a second case, a mother uh, 30 years old, uh, 37, um, um, had a baby 37 weeks gestation. Uh, the mother had uh, um, diagnosed with syphilis six months uh, prior um, to the um, to pregnancy. Uh, one to eight treated with uh, benzos and penicillin and um, RPR at the time of uh, treatment was 132 and then um, decreased to 116 and then once one month later increased again uh, during pregnancy to 128. And before delivery um, dropped uh, to 122, uh, baby was um, um, have IUGR with um, low birth weight, but normal exam and titer was one to two. So this um, woman was treated during pregnancy and more than four weeks, um, the infant exam was normal. So this is less likely. And this baby was treated with uh, benzosine penicillin. Uh, I think this is my last slide um, in summary. Um, syphilis um, and congenital syphilis um, has been in increasing in the US and globally. And um, again, congenital syphilis has characteristic symptoms and signs, but uh, remember the majority of, of, of kids or babies born, they don't have symptoms at birth. So a normal um, a looking baby with, um, even if with normal um, uh, laboratory finding can have, um, a congenital syphilis. And uh, timely identification and treatment of maternal mothers uh, can prevent congenital syphilis. And diagnosing of babies with congenital syphilis require, uh, again, a combined interpretation of the mother and infant tests. You have to look at the mother history and treatment and testing, and also uh, the infant uh, test and um, to formulate your um, treatment decision. Um, we 
get calls all the time about cases of um, congenital syphilis and every case is very unique and um, nobody follows uh, the book. So you usually have to uh, look at the algorithm and um, um, use your judgment. But um, the rule is if you're in doubt, just treat. Um, it's, um, this is the only case usually uh, we we have very loose storeship for using antibiotics. So if you if you um, if you can't make up your mind or decision to about the the case, um, I would I would rather treat rather than not uh, treat. And again, most of these kids uh, follow up sometimes can be very difficult or um, can lose in their follow up. So if you're if you're deciding about, uh, um, between giving I am shot or not, I will just give it. Um, thank you very much. That's the end of my uh, slides. And uh, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Saleh. That was actually that was a fantastic presentation, really good overview on congenital syphilis. So thank you for taking the time and coming and talking to us about that. Uh, as you mentioned, if anyone has any questions, um, please go ahead, you guys can unmute, you can put in the chat, however you like. If nobody has question, I have question for you guys. <laughs> So how 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 do you guys screen uh, women in Cameroon? Is um, do you have uh, like a screening program for all women, or you just um, do it on um, risk based? Yes, so, thank you, Sally. So how do you do it in Your your voice is um can't hear you well. Sorry. Yeah, I can hear you now. You can shout. <laughs> As I was saying, pregnant women here are expected to attend antenatal consultation, and now during this consultation. They are expected to do testing for syphilis, and this usually includes a new outcome and its CPH rate. Did you hear that? Okay. Is that it? Yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I can barely hear, hear you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's raining here. Okay. Do you guys do RPR or VDRL in Cameron? Yes, so we have the ability to do both actually. But routinely, VDRL is more commonly done. Okay. I did have some questions for you, but I doubt we are going to be able to get them. Yeah. Yeah, we can yeah. try. Yeah. yeah, and I will also I'll I'll share share with you also my email. Uh if even anybody have any question, you can definitely uh contact me too. Yes, that, that would be great. Thank you. So first of all, I would like to thank you for what was a really comprehensive lecture. And there were so many things to get from that. So thank you very much. I personally can't wait to go back to the colorful algorithm and evaluation of the units. Now, the first question was, can you say more about HIV and syphilis co-infection? Now, you mentioned the evaluation does not really change, but does this co-infection increase the likelihood of transmission of one or the other? Yeah, thank thank you for thanking me. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a very good point. There is a lot 
we can talk about syphilis I didn't mention, but uh, definitely uh, syphilis on its own increased um, risk of HIV, I think by three to five times fold. And we think mainly because, you know, with um, um, the, when you have the chancres and the ulcers, they're very vascular and you can easily um, facilitate transmission of the HIV virus. Um, and the other way around also in HIV, um, also they are more at risk for um, uh, contracting syphilis. And especially if you look at men who has sex, um, men who have sex with men, the syphilis rates are very high compared to other um, uh, populations. Uh, so they, yeah, and, and the general rule is if you have any STI in this sexual transmitted infection, then that's your increase your risk for other infection. That's why usually you screen for all. And if you have a baby with congenital syphilis, you have to make sure HIV testing is done also on the baby or um, if, if not the mother uh, has been um, done in the first and third trimester. Here in the US, usually you do HIV and RPR in the first trimester and the third trimester for, for the mother to rule out HIV and syphilis at the same time, yeah. But yeah, that's a very good point. But uh, HIV itself, you treat the same. You don't, um, you, there is no difference between HIV infected and non-HIV non infected in management. And um, same thing also in pregnancy. We don't think pregnancy itself change the syphilis, congenital syphilis course. Uh, um, so um, it doesn't differ from, um, um, it doesn't change it, but uh, again, um, pregnancy, um, facilitate infection in the in the baby. So mothers, um, when they have uh, spirochetemia, they hematogenously uh, transmit the infection to their babies. Okay, Dr. Sally, thank you very much. So my next question was, do you get CSF for all the neonates who have a positive serum EDRL or RPL? No, not all of them. Um, uh, usually you, you do it uh, for, um, uh, if you go to the algorithm, if you, if you, we do it for, um, if you evaluate, if the mother of Seth, for example, had not treated at all or uh, not adequately treated, and when you do your evaluation, uh, you include um, um, uh, the CSF, but um, uh, not all the time in, um, if you have less likely diagnosis or unlikely, then you don't do evaluation at all. Uh, but in the proven or highly probable or possible, then you do the uh, CSF. Okay, I see. So how does that affect the duration of management for these, for these children, for the neonates? When you um, do have CSF, yeah, this Yeah, that... this, this actually has been a very controversial uh, question yeah it doesn't it doesn't affect your management so you you do the 10 days um in uh, either case if you if, if you have a proven or highly probable or possible you have to treat for 10 cases and luckily um there is no reported cases of um treatment failures um so i think in adults now they don't do lumbar functions anymore uh, after um diagnosis but um uh, like repeated lumbar puncture after the initial diagnosis. You don't do a follow-up lumbar puncture, but um, it just document your you have neurosyphilis, but it doesn't, the treatment is the same, 10 days course for, for each. Um, there is another question in the chat about duration of antibiotic. If, um, yeah, so again, the same thing, yes, 10 days. Yeah, you, you, uh, if, if the CSF analysis is abnormal, you do 10 days. But the main thing is, you still the Red Book recommends um, repeating another CSF in six months later to ensure uh, resolution of this. But there is no no studies like in adults to say no, we don't need to do this. So the um, usually um, 
the practice here for us, usually we do, we repeat it again, six months later, we do another LP and look at the CSF. Thank, thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Sally, for what is actually a very relevant topic in our context. Thank, and thank you. We're looking forward to now your email so we can get back to you. So thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, if you have any question about this, and we'll um, we'll love to come one day and visit Cameron. Yeah, we would love that. All right. All That's right. fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I've, yeah, if there's any other questions, Dr. Saleh's email is in the chat. And so please feel free to reach out to him. And thank you for joining. Thank you, Dr. Saleh, for your presentation. Uh, it was very comprehensive. It was very good. Um, and we will see you all in the next one. Take care. Thank everyone. you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.